Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to the name of the Lord. Glory to the name of the Lord. Glory to the name. Glory to the name. Glory to the name of the Lord. Glory to the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Glory be to God. God is awesome. Yes. Holy is the Lord. Amen. Righteous is the Lord. Yes, the nature of the Lord is holiness and righteousness. Our God is an awesome God. Yes. You know, He performs miracles. Signs and wonders follow those who believe, He said. Amen. His anointing Amen. rests upon His children to declare them His before the world. Amen. Amen. God is good. Yes, he is. God is good. Yes. God is forever good. Amen. Whether we know it or not, one day we're going to figure out, figure it out one day eventually. Whether we understand him, believe him, want him or not, one day we will know that God is good and God is awesome. Yes. You know, he's awesome, he's holy, he's righteous. And he's calling us into that nature of his, all right? He's calling us into that nature. Today we're gonna to continue on this message on love, agape love. Agape love, amen? But we wanna focus on what we, as people on the earth do now. Last week we talked about what God, is expectation, the way God sees it and all that. We wanna talk about how it affects us and how we also should operate inside what we call the agape law, because this is what the nature of God is. The Bible tells us what? That the Holy Spirit has shared what the love of God has shared abroad in our heart by the Spirit of God. Yes. Remember that Jesus already said, the Father will send the Comforter who will be with us forever. That is the Holy Ghost. On the day of Pentecost, he manifested himself and came. Then the Bible says that he also is the one that gave us what? The gift of tongue, and then he shared the love of God in our heart. So that we have this love of God already. Agape is already built in us. Yes, it, is. it is left for us to either use it and apply it in our life to the glory of God. So it is the tool. It's the tool by the Holy Spirit delivered unto us to use while we are here living our lives as Christians. It's the tool. The love of God. The enduring love of God. We describe it as we read last week in the Bible. The attributes, the qualities of it. That's what God wants us to live while we're on earth. To be more like him. And when we live that kind of life, we are drawing people unto God. We are, we are giving them God. We are giving them the nature of God. We are acting like God in terms of our character. Our attributes. And it makes a difference to those who don't know God. To see someone who can love unconditionally. Who is consistently... The same, who is not affected by what they say or do, but they are consistently unchanged. You see what I'm saying? All right? And that's what we need to do to the glory of God. Amen? Because he gave us this gift, deposited this in us for this very reason that we might operate in this particular area. Amen? 
Because when we do that, we are giving, we are offering, we are sowing God into the life of people. They have to see the nature of God. Because when they see you and you are like that, what they say is that's a Christian. And after, beyond that, what they are thinking is that's the nature of God. That's why a Christian has the nature of God. To be able to love, to forgive, to be consistently offering love. All right? It makes a difference. And that's why some people, the devil, those who are possessed with the devil, they hate the fact that you don't change in the face of their accusation, in the case of whatever they do or say and do to you, you are still remaining consistently in love and still offering love. They know that is God. The demon in them knows that is God. That's why they get mad and they are angry at you for not willing to change like the world will change. For not declaring unto them a piece of the earthly mind, but you are giving them a piece of the heavenly mind. The mind of Christ. And that's what they can stand. That's why the enemy can hate you for being consistently a giver of love, a gap of love. All right? We find it very difficult, you know, to forgive a loved one, someone that we love or that loves us. All right? A family member, a spouse. When they do something that offends us, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to <laughs> forgive and to move on. We get upset. But yet, when we are in the world, we deal with the world differently. We show that character of Christ to the world. That's right. We are always doing the, going the extra mile to say, I'm a Christian. They must see me and honor me as a Christian. I'm not going to go out of character. I'm going to behave well. But God wants us to behave well even among our loved ones, our Christian brothers and sisters, even among those who are what who are uh, 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 attached to us by marriage, by whatever it is, the children and all. We have to show the consistency of the nature of God because they are all what learning about God from us. The higher you go in the spirit, the more I learn about God from you. And the lower I go in the spirit, the more the lower, the less you know about God from me. And eventually you will be uninterested. Because I'm not portraying the love of God in what I'm living before you. You follow what I'm saying? Amen. So that all of us have a responsibility to operate in this, that we might all be pulled together and rise up and learning more about God. Right. Learning more about love, about the nature of love, the nature of God. You see, this nature is what attracts. Without this love nature, we don't attract nobody. Nobody is drawn to us unless we are operating as Christians and offering Christ and love. You see what I'm saying? They are drawn to the quality of life that is unique and different from what the world has to offer. And that is what operating in love. Being nice and consistent and having an answer to give all the time. You see, when you are operating in love, you have the word of God manifested through your lips. You give good and holy and righteous counsel. Counsels that will bring somebody out of their problem. And just imagine what? Not only do they say that you are unchanged, you are consistent in your offering of love. You also have the right word in your lips all the time. They're going to be drawn to you. They're going to go and come back to you. You are showing them an example of righteousness. And that's what will bring them into the kingdom eventually. And that's what God has called you to do. To be Christ-like. Yeah. To be like Jesus. To be like God. To offer what God is offering. The one he deposited in you, like we said from the beginning. Which is what? His love shed abroad in your heart. His gifts of the Spirit manifested in your life. The gift of the Holy Ghost was speaking in tongues that it came when it came down on the day of Pentecost. That you are operating in those things and keeping you calm enough to remain unchanged in the face of wickedness or bad things. You stand to your ground and you remain unchanged. So they are drawn to that. And when you open your mouth to talk, in spite of what they said or done, you are still speaking truth. You are speaking the words that will transform their life, that they know is true, that it's true. They know these words are powerful. So they can live but they can't forget it because it's the truth. And they will come back. They will seek you again for the word out of your lips. They will seek you for counsel. They will seek you for understanding. They will seek you for the peace that you offer because you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. They Amen? You because Christ. you have love to offer. Love doesn't mean you touch the sleeping and you It just means that you are consistently there and you are willing to help somebody. All right? You are willing to help somebody. It's not like they come to you and say, get out of my face, I don't have time for this. You don't understand that yet? I don't know what's wrong with your brain. Get out of here. No. Persistently, consistently being there, offering the patience and the love of Christ. Amen? Amen. 
So we do it to unbelievers. We don't want to do it to each other as well, to our spouses. Nobody is perfect. But the consistency of my attribute, my character, is what's going to lift somebody up into Christ or to go deeper in the things of the Spirit. If I am not consistent, if I'm consistently changing, they don't know which way I'm going to go today or tomorrow. They're likely not to come to me again. You see what I'm saying? That's right. But if I'm consistent, they are always drawn back to me. And that's what God is offering us. God is consistent. Jesus is consistent. So we are drawn to God. We're drawn to Jesus because we know we're going to get the truth. We know we're going to get it. We're going to receive the love from God. Amen? So we continue to come. So we have to do the same thing. All right? Remember before you even came to your loved ones, your spouses, your whatever it is that you have, relationship with that you love, there was a time when you were trying to get hooked up with them. Remember those times? That there was a time that you tried to be, you trying to get to know them. You were not offended when they did something wrong then. You knew something was wrong and they did, but you were not offended. Because why? Because you were open to love them. And you didn't want to blow your chance. You are following me. Amen. You are forgiving somebody that you know, you're trying to reach them, you're trying to connect with them, and you are able to put up with whatever they did shout, all because you were still trying to connect with them. The way they dress didn't matter if it was somebody you are seeking for a spouse. All you know is when things work out, when you hook up with them, you're going to change out their clothing. Wow. <laughs> you're going to dress them differently. Wow. But in your mind, you're already planning it. Well, how are you going to handle it? But you don't let yourself be offended by anything they do because you have the love to offer them. That's right. You're not offended. The same reason, but my point is this. You chose not to be offended because you love them enough and you want to connect with them. So by the same token, when you love, like God wants you to love, when somebody offends, you're going to be able to do what? To be consistent and not change, not react to what they are saying or doing. You following me? Uh -huh. Because you will purpose in your heart to be there until you can connect them to where they ought to be or love them enough or bring them into the fold. So you do the same thing in the world, you do it with family, with loved ones, because we want to move each other up higher in the things of the spirit. But if you're not consistent, the party will not be sure that they can approach you or not. So, you decided not to be offended because you want to hook up with that dude or do that, and you were not offended no matter how nasty they were behaving, because you just say, okay, okay, that's no problem. That's... Some actually have been dragged through the mud and they remain loyal and faithful. Because they want that person. It's just human nature. Some say, I'm not going to go through that. No way. So if we can decide to do that in the natural, then we can decide to love just by anybody for the glory of God. Amen? That's my point. Imagine if God was supposed to was responding to us the way we respond sometimes to other people. That because we're not doing right or we're not understanding, we're not operating the way he expected, we he chose to say, okay, forget them. Then, right? I don't know what I don't know what is in their head. It must be a defect in operating in them. And then it condemns us to the way we do some people. Sure. You see? Right. So God is also doing the same thing we are talking about. He's being patient and loving. No matter how we miss it, what we do wrong, God remains in our bias forever until we get it right and we get on board. His love is genuine, it's without condition. So that we have to be able to do the same thing no matter what the setting is. On the job, at home, in the neighborhood, you know, with our friends, our children, our loved ones, our family, we have to have the same thing. It doesn't mean you are stupid, that you have to stoop down to the level of stupidity and let the devil rule over you. No, I'm not saying that. But you should be able to recognize when somebody lacks understanding where you have to wait patiently until they come higher in the things of the spirit. Because then, when they see what we're talking about, they can also begin to work on their own, their own self to climb higher in the spirit. Like that, they begin to learn just like you've learned at one time. The beauty of it is you can't go up by yourself without them because you are family or you are loved one or you are part of the body of Christ. What, does, what would it look like if somebody in the body is sitting at this level spiritually, the other one is here. So that's why the strong must bear the infirmity of the weak. Yeah. You following me? 
and be able to contribute to the success of the week until they can also see and throw the up. We have to be patient because we all need to move up together. Not one year, one year. All right, and God provides somebody for everybody. So in you understanding that, you are able to operate in love and in patience to drive that person up slowly. All right, and that's what this message is about. All right, look at First uh, Corinthians thirteen from verse four. First Corinthians thirteen from verse four. It's a love suffer us long. This is the attribute of the love that we're talking about: the agape love of God. That we ought to operate in because it's only one love for us, it's the agape love. Amen. As far as our attitude, that quality should be, it should be a agape kind of love that we operate in on a regular basis. Alright? So if God gave brought the Holy Ghost down and he put that love in us, then we have it also. What is left is for us to pick up the tool and use it and consistently use it so that it's a part and parcel of our life and living. Charity or love suffer as long. So that is suffering in love. Genuine love will put up with. It will suffer to make something real. It will give of itself. Charity, love suffers long and is kind. In the midst of suffering, it's still kind. Showing good attribute, good quality. You know, kindness to those who are trying to get information or trying to, that you're coming across, you don't get angry for their lack of understanding. So charity envy it, no, that is no envy. If the next person is doing better, no, that is no envy, you rejoice with them, all right? Amen. Envy it, no, charity vaunted not itself. You know, it's not puffed up. Sure. Thinking like I'm better than, thinking like I got you say, I should have this. No, it's not puffed up, or it's not puffed up does not behave itself, you know, unseemly. So it's consistent with what you see the first time. It's continually what, we see, what you continue to see. It doesn't change to become something else or someone else. It's a consistent nature that we're talking about. doesn't behave itself unseemly. So whatever you realize of love when you see through love, it should be the same thing you will see from that source all the time. Seek it not her own. It's not easily provoked. It's not about its own. It's about the other. Like I said, you know, you have to be patient with somebody to see them, to help them see the love of God and bring them up. Amen. In the things of God. That's what he's talking about. Rejoice that, okay? Seek it not her own. It's not easily provoked. So you can challenge it all you want. All you're going to see is a consistent stare of peace, gentleness, and love right in the face of love. Amen. You're not going to see anger pop up because the anger is a different spirit. Yes. So you can't provoke it easily. Amen. Think of no evil. No evil thought comes out of love to affect somebody. No. It's consistently pure love. Reject it not in iniquity. So when you see the things of sin, you will not gonna find true love there. Okay? But rejoice it in the truth, referring truth. Bear it all things. You know what? Put up with all things. Uh, believe in all things. He believes all things. In other words, believes in the goodness, in the good that is in all things. Hope at all things. That is the hope for everything in love, all right? Hoping for the better, all right? Hoping for improvement. Hoping for being able to overcome. Endure at all things. It, 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 it can bear whatever you dish to it. Amen? Charity never faileth. It doesn't fail because it's consistent. That is this, uh, I don't know, I think it might be in the Bible too. And you know, a brother that says uh, the one who is patient will own the whole world eventually. Yeah, the meek shall inherit. Oh, there you go. It's, 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 it's the the, the meek shall inherit the earth. Yeah. So that's the nature of love consistent, very humble, all right? Meek, caring, consistently. That's why it can say in verse 8 that charity never fails. Whatever is set his eyes on to do, it will accomplish it. So in other words, in your life, if you are operating in love, whatever you set your eyes on to do, you will accomplish it. That's right. You will accomplish it because you are operating with love on the inside of you. Amen. Love is a strong love. God said love. God is love. Period. Amen. So if you are operating in love, you are operating with God and in God. And what is impossible for God? Nothing. Right? Right. So when you are operating in love, the nature of God, you are operating in God, and whatever you are pursuing, you will accomplish it. 
Amen. Because love never fails. That's what we just read. So we await this transition, but only when we are first babies in Christ. And it's for a change in our life, all right? And this change speaks of a... Let, let's look at Galatians chapter 5. Galatians 5, verse 22. Let me know when you get there. It says, but the fruit of the... Say, but the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. Joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. But these are the same attributes that we are reading in the, in the previous place. So he's telling us these are the attributes or the fruit of the Spirit. Uh -huh. That's what's going to develop in you. If you have the Spirit of God, you should wait for this transformation where this manifestation is showing up in your life. What manifestation? Love, peace, joy, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Yet again, such there is no law. Sure. Let's look at it again, what he's saying. But the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. But we just described love before in 1 Corinthians 13, and all we read in love there is similar to what we read after the word love here. You see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So what does he say? The fruit of the Spirit is love. Love is manifested in what? As joy, as peace, as long-suffering, uh, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, which is self-control. So in other words, you will operate in this. We are wanting to operate in this if we are not doing that yet. Because that is what the proof that we have, the spirit of the living God on the inside of us. Amen? Yeah. It's the nature of the love of God manifested on the inside of us that brings about this fruit. Again, think again. It's like the fruit of the spirit as in one, not fruits as in many. The fruit of the spirit, not as, not as in singular. So the fruit of the spirit is joy. Joy and it's love, rather, love. And love is manifested as everything else that you see. Love is the fruit of the spirit. So when you have the spirit, the first thing you want to say is love. Because when he came down, he shed his love in our heart. Yes. Amen, the Bible says. Amen. The love of God is shed in our heart by the Holy Spirit. So when he shed this love in our heart, the fruit of it is love. Because love is what God the fruit we are looking for is love. Because love is God. In other words, the God nature will manifest in you as you have the spirit of the living God. Yes, yes. If you have the spirit of the living God, the love nature of God should manifest in you. Then you are operating in God as you operate in love. That's what gives you the ability to be transformed and to have what Joy, love, peace, long suffering. Remember the word who says the joy of the Lord is our strength. So when you have love, which is God, you also have the joy of the Lord, which is your strength. That's the strength you need to manifest fruit, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, self-control, meekness. God empowers you by his spirit to manifest those things. So this is all about the agape unconditional love. It puts you at a state of peace and rest from which you don't want to change, that you may manifest the fruit, which is love, that brings about all of these other attributes. And that's the God nature manifested in you because you have believed according to the word of God and you are doing what the word of God is saying. Amen? Amen. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Love is manifested as joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, which is self-control. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have, so have crucified the flesh with the affections and laws. When you belong to Christ, you have crucified the flesh. The flesh is what will go against you manifesting the fruit of the Spirit, which is love. Because the, the flesh is unstable. The flesh wants this and wants that and wants that and wants this. The flesh hates this. The, the, the flesh has different reasons to pick a side on every issue. But the love of God only picks one side. It consistently delivers love. Are you, you see what I'm saying? So the flesh will be wishy-washy in a lot of areas. 
Because somebody hurt me here, I hate going to that place. Because this person that is, I don't want to talk to him. I don't want to see his face. Because of this thing here, so the flesh is deciding already how it's going to act. However, the love of God, the unconditional love of God, does not look at take ill, does not take account of evil done to it. It only remains consistent and does the same thing all the time. That's why Christians have to crucify the flesh. He says what? And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. He likes this thing because he wants it because he thinks it's cool. But there is no real desire for or any kind of value to know whether that thing is worth it or not. It's just think it looks good. So the flesh decides as it goes. But you got to crucify the flesh that you may allow the spirit within you to manifest the fruit. And the fruit will bring about all of these other things that we're talking about into your life. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we need to be patient with each other that all may gain maturity of the spirit. Because when we hear the word of God, all this beautiful word that tells us about character and attributes, loving, being kind, being patient, enduring, all of those things, these are what Jesus says, the words that I speak unto you, they are what? They are spirit and they are life. Therefore, if they are spirit, they have a life of their own, which when these words are sown in your heart, they take effect of their nature in your heart. That's why when you hear the word of God, you are at peace. You read the Bible, you are at peace in your heart. Amen? You have this thing that is, you just know you are at peace. You have received this word. And it makes a difference hearing them because they actually sit in your heart and they begin to plant the effect of that of the attributes of those words in you. The peace comes, the joy comes, the gentleness comes, all of those things that are in your life. If you will tune away the flesh and really crucify it, you will see the effect of the spirit of the word of God in your life when you hear it or when you read it. But because we don't crucify the flesh enough, it's always a little bit of a cloud when we hear the word of God. We know it's good, but something is not allowing it to fully manifest its attributes in our life. So what I'm saying is you receive this word and you know something is at war at peace in your heart and you feel good about it. But what happens is when somebody brings a negative word that is counter to the word of God, if you have not crucified the flesh, it disturbs the peace of the word of God in your heart. So you get up and you add contrary to it. Once if you stop the peace, you get up and you act contrary to it. Your flesh rises up. But that's why you can't crucify, you have to crucify the flesh, and then we let and, and then when these words come, you can actually see the effect of the word of God in your life. Because it's peace giving, it's love giving, it's guaranteeing the you know gentleness and likeliness of the things of God. The character of God is manifested. You are seeing this difference. Amen. So it's left for you to take it and run with those. If you don't run with them, and when these negative things come, they're going to disturb the peace that was delivered into your heart. That's why Jesus said, when, when, when the word of God is shown in the heart of the people, that the enemy comes, the fowls of the air, comes quickly and steal the word. It stirs up something to make you walk out of character. Stir up the old flesh again, and then you lose all of these attributes. That was deposited in you. Why you felt so wonderful about the word you just received. You felt good about it. There was peace when you heard that word. When that word was delivered into your heart. The word of God is sown in the heart of people. And in their heart, Jesus said, where? Out of it comes all the issues of life. Even bad things, you know, wickedness, murder, bad motives come from the heart. Why? Because the earth is where things are sown. God sows his word there. The devil sows his own bad things there. But if you crucify the flesh, you will not allow the devil to, you won't have room to sow those things in there. The flesh is crucified. The devil will not have room to sow anything, but only God will sow the things that he wants to sow in your heart so that you can feel what the nature of heaven is while you are on earth. That's why you can stand different amongst people on the earth, and they wonder why you are so confident you look like. They think you oh, always cocky, feel like nothing can touch him. Nothing can touch her. She feels that she's this, she's that. Oh, but she's a Christian. No, 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 no. There is the word of God operating in your life, manifesting those attributes. That's why you have peace. And you are not moved by those things that are happening. You don't move. Those things that are happening, they don't move you. And they think it's cockiness. It's not cockiness. 
is your confidence. Your confidence is in God. Your confidence is in the Word. So you know something beyond where they are that they don't realize yet. That's why you are able to stay and look like so you were cocky, you are confident. Yeah, you are confident, but your confidence is not of, your sufficiency is not of your own, but of Christ. Amen? Amen. He is the one doing the work in you. So we need to be patient with one another that we may gain what? Maturity of the spirit all together so we can all rise up together. So you got to maintain that thing. You got to maintain it by all costs. The teachings of the Bible gives us our heart, and gives peace to our heart before contrary words come to attack it. I just covered that. Look at Colossians chapter 3, my last scripture. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians 3 from verse 8. Amen. He's saying the kind of things that will affect or disturb the peace of your heart when you receive the word. Some of them are listed here. Okay? Because they are to stir up the flesh. Verse 8. But now put away, put off all these anger. Mm. Do you know when you have some peace and quiet and you have a good time at the church and you get out? Some people, it takes a little bit of something that will happen or somebody or something wrong with something and then you begin to lose it. You can begin to get angry. You begin to be something is stirring up in you. You lose all the joy. That you just gained the peace that you have begin to melt away because something is wrong outside. That is the fault of the air coming to seduce or steal the seed of the world in your heart. You have to remain consistent no matter what happens. That's why it said, put away what? Anger. Anger. Wrath. Malice. Because the malice is a seed planted by the devil. To make you think out of line and plot evil, all right? Blasphemy. Sometimes you can say you are a Christian and you receive thoughts that make you doubt the word of God. That's blasphemy, and it comes from the devil, mm -hmm. all right? Filthy communication out of your mouth. You say the wrong thing, you know. Sometimes because it sounds funny for somebody to laugh, or because you just think uh, 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 just to say because it came out, of, it came into your mind. If it's coming to your mind and it's not happy, it's not in line with the word. Don't speak it. You're speaking doubt onto your own life, onto your own destiny, onto your own vision, onto what your dream is or where you want to go. Don't speak negative things. All right. So fill the communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another. When you begin to lie, the spirit of lying is not of God. So you're partaking of another spirit. It's a sea stone in your heart that will steal the word and make you cont cont act contrary to the word. Mm -hmm. Alright? See that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. All these come from the old man. So if you don't crucify the flesh, it will be awakened. So if you don't crucify the flesh, the old man will be awakened and you will accept all these thoughts and all these words that come to you. And when you begin to act according to this word, then you've lost the peace that the word of God just deposited in your heart to make you different, to make you feel like God wants you to feel, to make you live your life on earth here as though you are in the presence of God in heaven. Amen. Amen. So, lie not one to another, seeing that he have put up the old man with what his deeds. It's the deeds of the old man. If the old man will be quiet and not interfere, we're going to be fine. But the old man is always doing his deeds, and his deeds are contrary to the word of God. That's what's drawing us back. That's why you got to crucify the old man. All right? Put out the old man. How far am I going? Okay, but stand. And have put on the new man which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him who what? Who created him. So in other words, now you are putting on the old man and you are putting on the new man which is Christ. How do you put on Christ? This word, live according to it. Understand what he's saying. Let it be your lifestyle, what you do in any and all situations. Let it be in line with the word of God. That's the new man. That we have to put on and live by as Christians on a consistent basis, manifesting for the love which is unconditional, the agape love of God that God has given us to operate in as his children. 
That's the way God flows through us unto others, through the agape love, which is God Himself. Amen. Because the joy is God, He said. Yes. So when you live according to the nature of God, through love, God is manifested and is flowing through you to reach somebody else. He's reaching out by Himself. So God is campaigning for Himself through your lifestyle. If your lifestyle is right, somebody is reading it, and God is campaigning right by Himself, by His Spirit, through your lifestyle to somebody else. So that we're going to let our lifestyle campaign for God, or let God campaign through our lifestyle. All right? And I put on the new man which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of Him that created Him. Yeah? After the image of Him. That created a new man. So the new man is after the image of him who created the new man. That's God, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, Barbarian, Scythian, born nor free, but Christ is in all and, and in all. Christ is all and in all. At this point, you understand that there is no difference between the races and the people. We are all one. We belong to God. Amen. I don't know what the devil is doing. I wish there was a place you can build big enough, not me per se, but I'm saying for the body of Christ, let the whole race, all the cultures and tradition of the world, all coming together and have a massive all day service or all week service. You know what I'm saying? Different cultures come to praise God in their own way. And we all join in. And another one come. We go from nation to nation, culture to culture, praising the same God. Sure. Let us do it for a month long service. Show the world that we have a God who will marry. Amen. But imagine what God will do in the midst of that. Sure. Wow. Yeah. That will be a wonderful service. They do it in the world. They have their own different things that they do. They collect, call each other together and service their devil, their demons. But let us come together in a mighty way. A ma massive ocean of people worshiping God from all over the world at one time. Let it go on for a whole week or a whole month of worship, of praise, of adoration to the living God. Let the power of God manifest. People of God dancing and dancing up. Different kinds of dance on all parts of the world. All right? All cultures. All people. All nations. Manifesting the love of God for one another. To be that we are in heaven. Amen? But it's not only, but only Christ is manifested because Christ is in all. That's what he's saying. All right? Verse 12. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies. Bowels of mercies. That's what it takes for us to allow love to flow. If you don't have mercy in your heart, you won't want to allow love to flow. Sure. So he's saying. Put on therefore as, as the elect of God, holy and beloved. You are, you are beloved of God. You are an elect of God. You are holy and beloved. You have to not manifest bowels of mercy and kindness, humbleness of mind, and what? Meekness and long suffering, which is self control. Meekness and long suffering, which is being able to put up with, you know, allow for things, long suffering, and not just be so selfish in all things. Amen. Verse 13, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. This is so important. Forgiveness is also key. Jesus talked about it. So if you don't forgive, how will the Father in heaven forgive you? So we have to be able to forgive also, all right? Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have quarrel against you, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on what? Love, charity. Which is what? The bond of what? Perfectness. Charity is the bond of perfectness. The bond is like glue. So in the midst of all this character that we show you, it's not put on charity. It is the bond of perfectness. It's what seals the deal. But we know that love is God. So we allow the flow of God right in the midst of the people. That's what it means. Once we are right and everybody is doing what we're supposed to do, then the flow of God right in the midst of his people. And God can do anything and all things then because we have given him a channel to flow through. Amen? <coughs> and let the peace of God rule your hearts. The peace of God now rules your heart to the which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful. Let 
the word of Christ dwell with you, you. you richly in all wisdom, teaching, admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. In other words, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Your victory is in the word of God manifested in your life. Because all that you got to do, you got to do it like Christ. So you do let the word of God, the word of Christ, dwell in you richly. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. It seals the whole thing. It seals the whole thing as to that which God is calling you to do. It seals the whole thing as to you walking in the agape love of God. It seals the whole thing as to you manifesting the love of God to touch the other people around the world, all right? And that is how God wants to manifest it. Look at verse 17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Remind me of all is uh, the Pentecostal Holiness Church, the church in the old days. Everything is in the name of God. Everything, is, And that's what it's supposed to be. Giving glory and honor to God all the time. All right, being considerate of the fact that God exists. If God is within you, He said He would dwell in you. If He's in you, you must not give Him the honor. I should go about every day. Amen? Amen. So that's what He's saying. Do it all. Do it all. Number 17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Amen? Amen. So this is the love. Manifested in us. We talk about the love of God, the capital love, from God's perspective into us. Now we're seeing how we ought to apply it also in our life, in our daily living, because we are God's children. Amen? And we have to manifest God. The only way we manifest God is to allow God's word, God's will, God's love to flow on, to flow through us. Let us be a channel that conducts the anointing and the presence of God. That's all it's talking about in a short. But I hope that we are able to glean from this enough to be able to build on as we go home from here. Amen? I'm just going to stop right here. <clears throat> Give the Lord a hand for what he has delivered. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we bless your name. We glorify and exalt you. You are Lord and you are God. That is who you are. For without you, we cannot do anything. But you care for us so much that you are always feeding us with the heritage of Christ, the truth in your word, to bring us understanding that you might order our step and direct our path in the perfection of your will. Father, I thank you that in Jesus' name you said you will never leave us, nor forsake us, even until the end of the age. As you have fed us with your word this day, we seal this word within our heart that it shall not fail us to manifest this word in our life in the name of Jesus. We cancel, therefore, every effect of power of the flesh or the old man in the name of Jesus as we crucify the old man in the authority of the name of Jesus. That, Lord, your word may have free cause and manifest for this love in our life to glorify your name. For you are Lord and you are God. That is who you are. Besides you, there is none other. We want to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. We thank you, Father God, for the invitation of your Holy Spirit to manifest in the life of every believer in this house today. We pray, Father God, for a special and a new and a fresh anointing to settle upon us even as you begin to lead us and guide us and treat us, Father God, into all truth by your spirit that we may not fail you but continue in the light that you have provided before us today. We want to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor and the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.